What does Louisiana have to do with Brampton, Ontario, Canada? All that and more coming up next on Beyond the Call. there's a lot of people involved in religion in this world. Very interesting. And religion is not God. Well, there is a gentleman who understood what I'm about to read. Jeremiah chapter one, verse four, then the Lord came or the word of the Lord came saying to me, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and ordain you a prophet to the nations. Brian Como is an amazing pastor at a place called Kennedy Road Tabernacle in a city called Brampton, Ontario, Canada. He is a great man, but he comes from Louisiana. <laughs> That's right, the southernmost state. It is a fascinating story. I want to bring it to you because it's important that we hear this to understand, doesn't matter where we're at, God has a plan for every single life. Every person who thinks, every person who knows, God has a plan for your life. The most known, yet most underread book in the world. What is it? It's the Bible. It is known by millions, yet undiscovered by millions. The Bible is a book rich in the knowledge about us and about God. Come along with us as we explore this beautiful book full of God's wonder and discover what it really means to be human. From the first book of Genesis all the way to the last book of Revelation, join us. People determined to know what the Word of God says. For your sample copy of the Bible Discovery Guides, contact us at Bible Discovery, P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. We're in Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. Or simply go to www.biblediscoverytv.com. often that I have people visiting from the United States, uh, and it is great to have them. But let's remember a couple of things. First of all, let's remember that church is a very interesting culture. Yet at the same time, church is owned by Christ. So the real church of God is supervised by the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. Now, one of the people who has a church in town in Brampton, Ontario, is Brian Como, and he's with us. Brian, how are you? Good, Good to, see to see you, you brother. <laughs> Brian, let me ask you a question because this is curious. Nobody really talks to you much about your background and where you come from. So I would like to know where in the world do you come from? <laughs> well, they do, they do ask me once I start talking, they say, you're not from here, are you? Well, started at, born in a small town, Youngsville, Louisiana, uh, Lafayette, Baton Rouge is the area, close to New Orleans area. But that's where we we're raised, junior high, senior high, all that stuff. But so you were born there, yep. and and were you born to a wealthy family? Were you? Oh no, a- no. Dad was. Uh, Dad did many things. He was a insurance salesman for a while. Ran a gas station for a while. Dad got his big break whenever he uh, bought a truck, and he got into the trucking business. So. All throughout my my elementary school years and high school years, I thought, man, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to drive a truck. I wanted to run dad's business. And so it was small beginnings, very not not a rich, fit, wealthy family at all. I would I would say middle to lower. How many brothers and sisters? One brother, two sisters. Uh one's passed away. Uh another sister right now has gone through ovarian cancer, so it's really struggling. So this is a, a really interesting time. Let's go back when, when you were a child. Um, what do you first remember? Because a lot of people don't remember until they're about five or six. What do you first remember? Uh, Cajun food, uh, (laughs) a lot of good cooking. 
uh, like crawfish, bald crawfish, bald shrimp, all those things. No, just family, friends. You know, family is very, very tight, very close together. Uh, just the friends from high school, because you, you go from elementary school to high school, and it's the same group of people because it's a small community. So you were in one community then. Yep. And uh, that community where there are a lot of, let, let's talk a little bit about this. The Catholic Church uh, is a dominant but, influence. Well, that's what we were. I mean, we, we were raised in, th- in Catholicism, which is Catholic Church, um, got saved in a Baptist church, and then went on to an Assembly of God. So I'm a, like a Catholic Baptist. <laughs> I'm, I'm all three. It's, all, it's like gumbo, all mixed together. Okay, but, so but that's the upbringing. So let's go back. You were in Catholic church. So that sure. means you went to catechism and all that? Oh, yeah. You, because if you're going to be that, you're going to go through all the catechism classes and stand out. You wear your little white suit and stuff. You go into the church. You do all the things that. What did you think of that? It was just, I didn't, you know, you just followed instructions. So you didn't you, really think no, about you, it? No, you just, it's what you did and what was told to you. So you just follow instructions and you. You went the whole route. You you did the because it, it's it's about being a good person, not how my life has changed or what is God saying to me. It's just about being. Everybody wants to be good, and you know later on in life you realize that that's not God's plan for us to be good. God wants us to be righteous and holy and obedient and follow Him. So when you were young and you were Catholic and you were being a good person. Oh, great! Yeah. So your your parents were also Catholic. They went to church too. No, 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 no. We we're South Louisiana, so it's it's maybe once every month or. But we were we, mom and dad were very good. Uh, we would go to church most probably every other week uh, to we call it mass, mm-hmm. and so but it, no, very consistently. Mom was very listen. My mother was in country and western music, so. You know, Loretta Lynn, Johnny Cash, uh, Conway, Twitter, all those guys, she knew. She has, she made albums. She has paper from them. Loretta Lynn saying, you know, Alice, you know, I'll help you if you come to Nashville. When mom got saved, and this is what would change our life, when she started to really change her life, she gave up all that stuff. So we went hardcore. We would have rosary nights. We'd go to somebody's house and have rosary nights, say penance in their home. This is outside of the church. So we were... Not really at that point saved, but we were hungry for the truth. So it wasn't just a, you know, follow the demands of the Catholic Church, which are some amazing, amazing people, but it's, we started to get hungry for, I, it's not more, I want the truth. What does the Bible, I don't want to just have laws. What does the Bible say? What does God ask of me? What, what's, what's my direction? What's my purpose in life? So your, your mom, you say your mom got saved. So yep. What happened? Well, she, no, she was introduced to Jesus. How we got saved was my sister, best friend, was dating a guy that was in Toto, uh, and and you know, and group Euro school. You you know that girl. <laughs> you know that they, they know those songs. Okay, all right. So she dated him. From her friend, w- gave the invitation for us to go to a small Baptist church in the sticks in Louisiana in Youngsville, and. She kept inviting, kept inviting my sister Lenora, and we just Lenora said, "Hey, would the whole family go?" I don't know how we did it, but we all went to that little revival. We went on the first night. Mama liked it. Went on the second night, and went on the by the fourth night, all of us walked that aisle and accepted Christ. Mom had she wanted to go a different route, not country music, not the bars, not the, all those clubs. She wanted something different for her family, and that night we accepted Christ. All as a family, all a different. And like I was sitting in the front, my brother sitting in the back, sisters up in there. And by the time we opened up our eyes, all of us were at the altar. So it was kind of like a tribal thing where your family oh, came forward, and listen, that was it. It was it, without that, it would have been massive trouble because you know, in in our realm in South Louisiana, if you walk away from that faith, you're ostracized, you're kicked. But we all together said, you know, we want it. We want more of God in our life. So how did that affect Catholicism and your mom with Catholicism now? Did she just walk away or what? what oh, happened? no, no, no. We all, yeah, we all did. It's not just Catholicism. It's just we wanted to know the truth. What does God say about um, uh, leadership? Or what does God say about 
who is it that we cling to? Who are we supposed to listen to? Is it Paul? Is it Peter? Is it Mary? Is, who are we hailing? And when, when it, you know, we start reading the scripture and it says, have no other gods before me, have no other, there's no one else besides me. You start to really question, who do I have to go to this person to get forgiveness of sins or can I go straight to the Father? So those kind of things we started to question. Uh, and that's when we open up the Bible for ourselves. You know, in, um, in the Catholicism Catholic Church, you, you, everybody had those big white Bibles that you never read. It's just, it was beautiful design. And so we got a Bible for the first time. And I think f- for us, it was a King James Version. A friend of mine told me to get a new international version, new living, you know, at that point, new international version. And we started to understand that everything Jesus said is a, it's like a love letter to me. And it changed my life. It, it was not that I'm just hearing someone say something, but I'm actually reading on pages witnessed by other disciples of Christ that saw him work, gave a report, and then it's almost like him speaking right to me. This is what I'm asking of you, Brian. So at a, that young age, you know. How old were you? Oh, Lord, 15, 16 years old. 15, 16? Yeah, it was a, it was a game changer, man, because it changed my friends, everybody that I was associated with at that point changed. That next school year, I, it had to be different because the path I was going on, drugs, uh, promiscuous, it just, that wasn't what I wanted. And I did, I, I kept myself as pure as pure can be. And I, I just didn't want to go that, and this Jesus that came to my life gave me the reason why I was holding myself, why I wasn't involved in indulging myself in all those things. And it's, and it's when your eyes are open to the truth and not just religion, it's a game changer. And it was a game changer for me. So you were 15, 16 years old. Your brothers and your sisters were there too. All, all, we're all two years apart from each other. Okay, so you're the whole family. I'm the baby. You're the ch- I'm you're the, the baby one. of the family. <laughs> you're the littlest one. That mean, no, no, that means I got what I wanted, <laughs> uh, the baby of the family. So your, your mother changes. What about your dad? Dad, it took a long time. Dad was, dad didn't change until I left. Remember, I was here at KRT as a music pastor. And then I left here after two, a year and a half and moved back to Louisiana to pastor church. That was there before I came back here this last time for 17 years. And my dad came uh, to the church. And it's on one of those Sundays, maybe I was at that church a year, year and a half, he walked up that aisle and said, I want to give my life to Christ. Again, I grew up in a family where it was constant confrontation, constant fighting, constant bickering back and forth. When dad's life changed, our family life changed. Our our whole, my mother was always been the, you know, talking to us about Jesus and praying with us. And, you know, she's, she's strict. She's a Cajun woman. She's very, very, very hard. But, uh, when dad's life changed, I saw everything change. The, their marriage changed. Uh, when they first started coming to the church, it was the best, you know, because dad's been passed away a oh, couple of years, but it was the best years of their marriage and our relationship that I'd ever had when he like, When that man, when a man changes and leads a family to, toward Christ, and not just to be religious, but really it's changed his heart, it changes those kids, it changes the the family dynamics, the marriage itself. It, it is, a, to me, it was a game changer. When we return, we'll continue this discussion. Very, very interesting. And we'll talk about what he's doing now, how he got there, and what's a Cajun man doing in Canada? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Stay there as we continue. The Bible Discovery Guide takes you through pages of the most important book that you will ever read. It is the Word of God. Through careful exploration and thoughtful insight, we uncover the truths presented in the Bible. For your sample copy, write to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. That's Bible Discovery, P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, write to Bible Discovery, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W, 
5G2. That's Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W 5G2. Or simply go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com. You know, when a man changes, everything seems to change around his family. And that's exactly what happened. Um, we're talking with Brian Como. And Brian, we, we talked about your family coming to know the Lord, uh, mm. except your dad. Right. And then your dad came to know the Lord. Right. And you had already been in ministry at that point. Right. So let's well, he did he, at the church that I'm pastoring, he got saved. Yep. So you, you talk about change a whole environment for me. You know, not the church, because we went to a church that was 27 people. You know, the Sims of God at that point said, oh, it's a successful church. They've got 150, you know how they say that. But it was good for me, though, Rob, because you want to go into a city and love the people. And if it's just all given to you, then you think it's off your personality that church grows. My dad accepting Christ, you know, with he's, he's a man's man. And he has his own business. He, he don't need anything else. He thinks. But then he finds Jesus Christ. And that just, just so much excitement for me that, man, if God can change me, God can change my father. Man, I mean, the sky is the limit for our city. And it just gave me a greater hunger for the people in that city. So the impossible task of changing your father yeah. was accomplished. Well, I, I, yeah, I couldn't do it. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in because... You can be good in front of someone. You can do all the right things, but you can't do anything without the move of the, of the Holy Spirit. And I don't have to talk about it all the time, but I know that God's Spirit lives inside me, moves through me. Every word has been ordained by Him. So when I'm, when I'm walking with God, He uses, you know, it's, there's a saying, and we said it in Church Sunday, uh, people have the same, well, I'm just not going to say anything. I'm just going to live it in front of people. That's that's baloney. It's just, it don't make sense. It comes through speech. God uses speech. We have to talk. You know, the gospel is to be spoken. How can they know unless they hear? So yeah, dad was, it was, a, it was amazing. So this, this is, let's go back to the time when, when the next year had to be different for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're a changed man. Was the next year different? How did you do it? Well, it's, it's, he's a testimony. I mean, you, you do it on this, this show. He is a living testimony of what God can do. And when you hear testimonies, it's for the encouragement of people who are going through things, uh, life challenges. Uh, you know, we have a, in our church, people are being healed from cancer, of terminal diseases, of, you know, people finding hope after a loss of a loved one. And when you hear those kind of things, it just, it pumps faith into your congregation. For my people, of that point, maybe a hundred something people to see my father be saved off that, you know, to walk the, 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 in front of the, to the altar, to kneel on it, daddy kneeling on his knees. It's, it's, it's a surrender. Mm -hmm. And if anybody was ever hardcore, like, I'll never do this. I'll never come to Christ. Don't ever say never. Cause when God gets a hold of you, Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. It, it, it changes your life. So your life was changed, oh, and changed. Uh, you you ended up in ministry. Mm -hmm. I mean, what in the world? Like, what happened? Well, the, the deal was is is uh, you know I thought I was going to live uh, uh, trucker. You know? Well, I thought I was going to run my dad's business, you know, doing trucking. But here's what I, I did: I felt like I had I learned in high school that I had a talent to sing. And then I went off, went to, to, to Bible school first, walked away from Bible school, went to our university in, in the city, University of Southwestern Louisiana, which turned into University of Louisiana Lafayette. And uh, once I started to use my talent, I just, I kept reading how God uses the gifts and the abilities he's given it to us. So I started traveling with a group from New Jersey, and that group would travel all summer long, do all these concerts. You know, I'm a Christian, I'm serving the Lord, doing all... And while I'm in that, the second year I'm into it, I thought, God, is this what you want me to do? You know, do I need to be with this group? Are you pulling? So I go home and I tell my parents what God's saying for me that he wants me to do. I've never done this before. I've never traveled on my own. I've never done, rec we did records with that group. 
Went back home, daddy pulled a loan for me from the bank, went to Nashville, guy who produced a record, uh, Dick Tunney was his was keyboard player for the Imperials and did for um, Sandy Patty and all that stuff. He knows people. We got together, did a custom, uh, you know, a no name label album. And that's where it started for me. And so then I had to go home and the next few years of my life was, am I really committed to this? Or is this a game? And mama's, again, strict Cajun woman, if you're gonna get into this, then you need to go all the way and, and follow. So I had to go home and learn how to book concerts, get services, hustle, and say, God, if you don't open this door, it's, it's not gonna open. So that's how the whole ministry started for me. I just wanted to see people, you know, to see people's lives change. Now, when, when you did that, how in the world did you get into preaching? Well, you're in front of people every week. And so do you just want it to be a music concert or do you want to share the good news? So you can do concert ministry like we did, but at the same time, you're studying every day also. So I'm just not banking on the songs to change people's lives, which it does, it, like worship does, but it's the word that changes people's lives. And so in study, in preparing for a youth camp or a youth Bible study or a concert or a youth ministry or a service in a church, you want to say more than just, hey, this next song is a good indication of, you know, if you're going through a tough time. But I, what does the scripture say about it? So that sort of got me. Preaching wise, I, where it started was at KRT because I was a minister of music there for a year and a half. Starting ministry all throughout, going to churches, all the churches I've been to. Kennedy Road Tabernacle. Oh, Kennedy Road Tabernacle was uh, here in Brampton. And you you just, there was just a call for me to step out. And to, I love music, but I, I, wanted to, I wanted to pastor. I just felt the call to pastor. So went to a small church in Louisiana and started there in Homa, Louisiana, right outside of New Orleans. And so you pastored that church? 17 years. 17 years? Yeah, it was awesome, man. Great church. So you were 17 years a pastor, and then yeah. all of a sudden, God began to speak to you. Yeah. What in the world happened? Okay, here, you, okay. How did you end up right. here? Here's, here's the deal. <laughs> this is actually water inside of here. I'm just letting you know. But um, this is what I say. Don't ever say never. Because, you know, when we came the first time to KRT, it's cold in Canada. Y'all, it's, it's cold. It's really, that, that wind gets through that jacket super easy. But we thought, we said we'd never come back. And we got a call, once we were at the church we were at 17 years, got a call and said, would you ever consider? And I remembered the people, and I remembered the city, and I remembered the potential. If you ever get to a point where I it's just, it's not that I don't, I want a break, but I just feel God call me on to something different. And that's what the call was. So we said, after we prayed, you know, Kim, she loves Louisiana. She's from North Louisiana. That's your wife. Yeah, my wife is 37 years, brother. Wow. 37 years, Mary. It's greatest decision of my life, besides accepting Christ, was marrying that girl. Best friend, great, has been with me through everything, through traveling by myself, through being with other groups and stuff she's just a bit and she's she's not your she's not your typical pastor's wife where you know she wants to run women's ministries and run the church and stuff she's just she's my best friend and whatever she wants to do she can do but she was okay with this Canada thing oh, so no, what, what happened at, well at the same time I think she was praying at the same time we just felt there was a move coming and we didn't want to be one of those people who, you know the Lord's been dealing with us for like the last three months now to change but it had been a while, and I, it was such a tough decision that when we it opened that door, I'm just telling you, like, I'm, I'm slim, I'm skinny, man, and I guarantee you I lost 15 pounds because I didn't want to hurt our church in Homa, and I didn't want to be the wrong person for, for Brampton, for KRT, for Kennedy Road Tabernacle. So it's that decision. Now, if I was a young kid, I just say, oh yeah, man, it's a big church. Let's come and do it. It's a huge responsibility. You have thousands of people under you to where my responsibility to God at the end is going to be, did you lead them right? 
Were you, were you truthful? Were you honest? Was there integrity? So that was my big choice was not just leaving Louisiana. Yeah, I miss the South. Crawfish, shrimp, all that stuff. And the culture itself. But it was a, I think it was a change that I think the Holy Spirit, I'll, I'll tell you what the change was. God sends subtle things to you, right? So we said, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll entice this offer. Let's, let's do this. So my daughter-in-law has a baby. We go to the hospital and I'm praying, God, if this is not what you want, it's easy for me to say, yeah, let's do it. But if it's not your choice, let me know not. So we go to the hospital, go inside the, the department store. What's inside the department store? A little bobblehead. You know those bobbleheads? What's the country it's from? Canada. <laughs> We walk outside, go to the parking lot. There's a car on the other side. Now, I'm, just, I'm not into all this conspiracy theory stuff, but there's a car. Where's the car from? Nova Scotia. Who would park a car in Baton Rouge, Louisiana with Nova Scotia? But God's sign. There you have it. A program experience delivering what God is saying to the human race today. Reading the Bible from cover to cover, we learn how God spoke to the people in the past, speaks about the future, and shows us how to react and respond to the difficulties and discovering of our lives today. Bible Discovery TV is a program hosted by the Hembry family as they uncover the meaning of God's message to planet Earth. To discover the meaning of God's Word and how the Lord is speaking to us today, visit Bible Discovery TV at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. That's BibleDiscoveryTV.com. You know, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, Brian is just an outstanding person, a wonderful man. And again, I want to remind you of the scripture that we talked about before we started this program. It is important. It says in Jeremiah chapter one, verse four, it says, then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. You know, God, has this plan for our lives that we don't have. A lot of people say, well, you've got to figure out what you're going to do. But the Christian, the one who follows Jesus Christ, not religion, but follows Jesus Christ, knows that it is the Lord in heaven, Jesus Christ comes into our heart and he leads us in the direction that he has called us to be in. And that's something that we should all consider when we listen to programs on Beyond the Call.